This video will introduce you to various tools for working with time. Hi, my name is Nahid. I'm a professional software engineer. I want to help you master tools and techniques of modern computing one video at a time. Let's dig into today's content. By the way, I made a separate video on general advice for working with time. You can find a link to that here. This video will cover specific tools you can use in C and C++. First up, how do we measure time? How long does something take? The first tool I'm going to show you is the clock function. The clock function returns the number of clock ticks since your system started. How often does the clock tick? Is it each second? Is it each millisecond? It depends on the platform and implementation. This is defined in the clocks per sec macro. In this case, it's 1000 or once every millisecond. Here, we stored the number of clock ticks before we ran the loop. Then we ran the loop. Then we stored the number of clock ticks after we ran the loop. Then we subtracted the end ticks from the start ticks to get the duration of this loop in terms of number of clock ticks. Then we converted that number to seconds by dividing it by number of clock ticks per second. So we got 9.25 seconds. Simple. Second problem. What is the time now? In this case, we can use the time function. You can use the time function in one of two ways. You can give it a pointer to a time underscore t type variable, or this function also returns the same value. This returns the Unix timestamp, which is the number of seconds since 1970, the Unix epoch, in the UTC time zone. It's an unsigned integer data type, so you can add and subtract and multiply and do other number things to it. How do we convert this number into something more human readable? One way is to use the C time function. As you can see, it printed the time in the local time zone. It also adds a new line. You can also convert it to a TM structure, which breaks the timestamp down to its individual components. So it contains year, month, day, hour, minute, second, etc. That's what we are doing here with local time. It returns a pointer to a TM structure. So it is returning an internal buffer. If you want a copy of your own, you can dereference it like this before something else calls this function and this buffer gets modified. We can also use asks time to convert the TM structure into a string. It has the same format as C time. After that, we are printing out the individual components of the TM structure. Two of the fields here are offsets. The TM year field is the number of years since 1900. So one means 1901. And the TM month field is the number of months since January. So one here means February. Everything else is normal. You can see the is DST flag as well for when daylight savings is active. If we want GMT or UTC time instead of local time, we can use the GM time function. It returns the same TM structure but in the UTC time zone. As you can see, it printed the same set of fields, but it is 11 hours behind. The last function I want to show is the strf time function. It is like sprintf. It takes in a buffer, its size, a format for the time, and the TM structure to print. As you can see, the program is trying to generate an ISO 8601 date timestamp. One thing I've noticed is the time zone printing only works for local time. 
For UTC timestamp, it prints the local time zone as well, which is not accurate. This is because the TM structure does not contain the time zone information across all platforms. You can see the other format specifies it supports in its documentation page. If you like this content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. All questions, comments, requests and feedback are welcome. I will see you in the next video.